Well, hello and welcome back. And my name is Colin and I am behind the Grey Wolf Bike YouTube channel. And I'm in the market for a RV trailer. And in researching the trailers, I am looking for something that is capable of going um, off, you know, paved surfaces up, say some forest service roads, and that might offer some increased ground clearance or knobby tires, some solar, lithium ion, that sort of thing. And so this series is looking at trailers that may fit that description. So if you've just clicked on this video because of the title of the trailer that we're going to be looking at today, which is an Ibex, then welcome. And uh, you don't necessarily have to be a mountain biker, although this series is looking at these trailers through the lens of a mountain biker. So where can helmets go? Where can riding clothes go? And what does that look like for uh, somebody like myself who is likely gonna find themselves boondocking or doing uh, off-grid camping quite frequently. So today we are here at Field of Dreams RV in Airdrie, Alberta, Canada, and we're going to go inside and uh, have a look at a Ibex trailer. So come on with me. Welcome to Field of RV Dreams, the home of happiest customers. How's it going? My name's Ahmed. I'm the sales manager here at Field of RV Dreams, and let me give you a tour around this location. Over here, we like to have a lot of fun. As you can see, our beautiful showroom, we nature it towards children, so this way the children always remember us when you go home and you're sitting there talking about trailers, they got you in your ear, always nagging you, saying, let's go back to Field of Dreams, the place where fun, Everybody is having a great time, home of the happiest customers. This is the best place you will find the best deals, the best service, the happiest people. I forgot to mention that, even though I still mentioned it, but just so you know, this is the place of the happiest people. Let me get take you outside and show you all the trailers that we have outside. We have the largest inventory in Western Canada. Come on this way. Now, I can go on and on and show you every single trailer that we have, but one of the ones that I really want to specifically show on to you guys is the Ibex 19 RBM. This trailer is absolutely fantastic. Here, let's go for a tour, right? I got it all parked up here for you. Now this trailer, as you can see, the Ibex logo right on the front, nice graphics on here to explore the outdoors. It's got the Asdell walls, which is a vacuum bonded uh, panel wall. So this way, if you ever had a water leak, your wall will never delaminate on you, right? You do have a griddle that comes onto this trailer, right? As for the outside kitchen. Over here, you do have your manual jacks, so, but grab a drill and you can just make it into power jacks, right? Power awning as well too. Over here, you do have your solid steps, right? You got that? The trailer does have a solar panel on top of the trailer, which is a 100 watt solar panel. It's got the off-grade package on here. You got your grab handle. Um, the uh, Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain tires with a better axle torsion bar on here. So I've crawled under here quite literally because I want to show you how a torsion spring suspension differs from a standard leasing suspension and how that is beneficial to mountain bikers or anybody looking to take the trailers in off pavement environments. So on a leaf spring suspension, the leaves are bolted to the frame rail at either end and the axle is bolted onto the leaf spring and suspended from it, which means as a tire hits a road object or obstacle, whatever that might be, the whole axle, it raises and lowers with that tire. That also means that the forces are being communicated to the opposite wheel as well, and it's going to sort of articulate side to side. Not significantly, but those are forces being transmitted across. On a torsion spring suspension, this uh, arm here 
is what actually moves. I'm you know, demonstrating it in the opposite, but it'll go up and down, where the actual axle that connects side to side remains fixed and welded in place. And what this essentially means is that this has independent suspension. So while they do utilize the same spring, that uh, this wheel, when it hits a road obstacle, will uh, um, travel up and down independently and not affect the wheel on the other side. So for off pavement uh, driving, where you're more likely to encounter uh, you know, bumps and potholes and that sort of thing, this is going to deliver a much better ride quality. So this is really good to see. Yeah, I, you know, I couldn't have explained it better myself, actually. Are you looking for a job? Because uh, we could be hiring, actually. <laughs> the all-terrain spare tire right here on the back. A lot of trailers, what they do is that they do, if they have the uh, all-terrain tires, usually they just got the dinky kind of spare tire on the back, right? I know we get those in our car. Well, you won't have to worry about it with this one. One thing I'd like to point out is that it has these uh, small LED lights up on the top of the trailer. And that's really nice to see because what is often the case, here's a couple of stick and tin construction trailers behind us. You can see that they're using a much larger style lens that has an incandescent bulb and it's just a much less expensive system. So what is cool to see is that IVEX is actually using LED lights up there. Something else worth mentioning is that the spare tire on the back is actually a genuine Goodyear Wrangler that matches all the other four tires. So where some manufacturers may have taken that as an opportunity to save a couple of dollars by putting a, uh, a non-name brand tire on the back, it's really nice to see that it is actually like a genuine Wrangler tire on here. Now, one thing that's really important to us mountain bikers is the ability to carry bikes. And something that you might see here is that there is no receiver. Now I had a chat with Ahmed and uh, we were discussing, there are some style um, you know, receivers that you can mount to the bumper, but the bumper metal is very thin and it won't support much more than what he described as children's bicycles. So for us, what you would need to do is get something welded into the actual frame itself. So they said that that is something that they're willing to help with, but it's worth noting that even though this trailer does have a lot of features that I think lends itself well to people who are looking um, to use it as a base camp for mountain biking, do be aware that there is no two inch receiver. There's you know, as many solutions as you'd like in terms of like how creative you want to get and how much money you want to spend, but that is something that is worth noting. Alternatively, what you would be looking to do is put your bikes on the roof rack of your tow vehicle. So there are solutions. All lights around the whole house are LEDs. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. Um, on the slide system right here, we do have a Schwintec slide system, right? And uh, so it has it on all four corners. So this way it gives you an even pull out and then an even pull inside as well too, right? And then um, also as well is that if you kind of hold the button for an extra three seconds, it does this micro adjustment. So this way you're not running into any issues of the slide kind of coming out lopsided or even coming back inside lopsided as well too, right? It does a 30 amp, oh, here, let me go back here. Yeah. It is a 30 amp service right here, right? And then you can, uh, if you go to a campground, you can plug in a satellite uh, or a cable right there, and it just feeds right into the house. Definitely. So making our way around the driver's side of the vehicle here, we can see that there is no shower setup. You do though have that cold water spray port on the passenger side. So that is where you would uh, spray off your bikes, et cetera. A lot of trailers do have it here on the driver's side because it's in a much less trafficked area and it won't result in like water pooling in and around like where you want to entertain or eat or whatever. Um, as it is, uh, you know, that really is more intended for just like rinsing off your dishes at the end of the day. But it's worth mentioning here as well. I also want to crouch down and point out that um, for us mountain bikers, the average temperature in Banff for July is plus one degree Celsius. So even though it's the summer in the mountains, it does inherently get quite cold. And so what they've done here that I like to see is that they have enclosed almost the entire Blackwater outlet so that this is going to prevent the actual valves from freezing. And then we see you have your valve controls here that do go up into the underbelly as well. And, uh, and that's to try to prevent freezing. So it's better cold weather performance. Now, would I expect to see this freeze in the summertime overnight? No, absolutely not. But if you are like me, who is looking at going down into places like uh, the lower mainland or the Pacific Northwest in February to get some uh, off, albeit wet season riding, 
then that's where this is going to come into play because the last thing you want to do is be dragging uh you know 25 gallons or whatever of uh of black water with you home so it is nice to see that it is all enclosed underneath so moving around the driver's side of the trailer here we can see that these doors do have a magnetic close on them now something worth noting though is the thickness of these doors so we can actually see a little subtle flex when we actually are going to um, unhook them. So they're a half inch door, it looks like, and uh, maybe three quarters. Nevertheless, it is on the narrower side of things. Um, something that's worth noting here as well is this is the city water connection. So this requires a pressurized garden hose to fill, but right above it is the actual dump. So this allows you to come in and take a, a jerry can, a, a, like a water um, traveling container, and then uh, use it to gravity feed your freshwater tanks. Um, what would be really nice to see on some of these trailers that are designed to go off road is a uh, Nautilus system, which allows you to siphon. But yeah, it's quite rare, unfortunately, to see on a trailer this size, even if it is intended to go off road. Up here in the front, we've got our storage space. And something I noticed uh, on my own tour just beforehand is that this is a aluminum construction under here. So even if the actual body is constructed of aluminum, a lot of trailer manufacturers will um, again take this as an opportunity to save some money and build the internal framing out of wood. Now myself, I would much rather have aluminum because I think it's just simply a stronger, uh, more long lasting construction compared to a wood construction. Uh, it looks like included in this trailer, you're gonna get a 30 amp cord as well as a spray port. And we can take a look on the other side where the, or a spray um, hose, I should say. And we can look on the other side where the actual spray port is. Now coming up around the front of the trailer, something that you'll notice is that it has a really big front window, which is what's gonna open up onto the sleeping quarters. You also have a diamond tread front pattern here on the front. The diamond treads themselves, it's meant to kind of give a more robustness uh, to rock impacts, which is why it's only on the low side here. Um, I do have this exact same product on my cargo trailer, and I can say that it will still inherently dent, um, but the idea is that the pattern will help disguise any dents from rocks. Uh, something else I noticed that's really quite nice on this trailer is actually the quality of the coating. Um, it's very consistent all the way down the frame rails. Often you'll see trailers that are just starting to rust on the frame rails before they've even hit the lot. This to me is uh, looking really nice actually in terms of its ability to withstand uh, our Canadian and winter weathers. Um, however, this only does have just a single 20 pound propane tank. So it's uh, not a double and it's not a 30 pound. I would actually like to see a bigger tank um, in the future, but that is something that you can certainly upgrade on your own. Once more, this is a scissor jack. So it's like your, the jack stand that you would find on like an automotive application. It, uh, you'd simply just uh, get like a, um, you know, an in, uh, impact gun, like a 12 or 18 volt, and then drive these down. Now, worth mentioning as well, we can see that the actual frame construction, they've welded the actual, or they've mounted, I should say, the actual front A-frame to the actual frame of the body in line. So this is gonna be really good for when you're going off-road because you can see all the ground clearance that you're going to get as opposed to a lot of trailers, surprisingly in this category, they mount the A-frame underneath the main body frame and uh, that's inherently gonna lose ground clearance. So while you might need to set your ball height higher on your tow vehicle, um, this is actually genuinely what you want. Now, also here up front on the trailer, this is the Lippert Steady Step, and uh, it is very steady. Genuinely speaking, I actually prefer this over the pull-out side steps, but in speaking to Amida off camera, one thing that is worth mentioning is that if you're uh, in a really muddy area, so let's say you went up your forest service road, you're mountain biking for a while, and then you wanna go change locations, you need to clean these steps off because if you don't, as you flip it up, all that mud and dirt's gonna end up inside of your trailer. So there are kind of pros and cons. Something else worth mentioning is these feet apparently can sink into really soft and muddy ground. Um, does this one have the adjustable feet? Yeah, I think these uh, silver bits actuate the actual, the legs. Um, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so it does work. Um, so that way you're able to accommodate for uneven ground in and around the bottom of your steady step.
Now taking a look underneath here, once more in the uh, running gear, um, not only is this a, a, a metal construction under here, but it does have a spray coating. So God forbid if you ever had a blowout of your tire, um, it's uh, going to stand up and resist uh, a lot of damage. In fact, there's no plastic trim on the outside here at all. And that's often the first thing that, uh, that will disintegrate in the event of a blowout of a tire. Now, as mentioned, towing on tandem axles is going to be uh, a lot uh, more comfortable from a dry perspective because um, single axles are prone to, to bouncing when you hit a, uh, a crack in the road, but the tandem axles are going to be a lot smoother from a ride characteristic. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail uh, on that in this video, but I would recommend checking out the Winnebago 2108 FLX um, that uh, we talk a little bit more in detail for why that is. Um, here at the rear of the, the trailer on the passenger side is where your stove and a little counter that, uh, that comes included with the trailer that you can mount on and a small spray port. Now this is only going to spray cold and um, uh, that's more just for like rinsing your dishes off or cleaning your plates or whatever. So, so taking a look on the inside of the trailer here. We can see that this is actually set up with a Murphy bed situation. So there is a love seat here and your main bed behind folds down. And I'll show you a better shot of that uh, in a second. We do have a dinette, but what I write, like that's really neat is this is a narrower dinette. It's not like a full size because as a couple's trailer, I don't really think that you need seating for four. I think seating for two is more than appropriate. You do have a gas electric fridge freezer here. Um, once more, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on why gas versus electric, pros and cons. Uh, definitely go and check that Winnebago 2108 video as well. Uh, we discuss that in a lot of details. But for relevance on this trailer, um, there is no battery that comes included in the trailer. You pick whichever one suits your needs the best. Most like group 31s are gonna be about 105 amp hours. And if it's a flooded lead acid battery, then you'll get about 50% of that as usable. And that will give you about 52 amp hours. So uh, depending on the actual draw, running this off of just the 12 volt may not last you all that long, which uh, is where the fuel comes in. But again, this is only a 20 pound tank. There is a TV up here, which I personally don't think there's a huge benefit uh, to having this TV, most especially when your love seat is there. And at best, you would be viewing it from this angle. I'm sure it is adjustable, but again, I quite frankly don't know why these manufacturers add TVs and like centralized audio systems. You pay for it as a consumer, but I don't think that you're getting the full benefit. I think more people are interested in how can I hook up a Starlink to my RV? And, um, and you know, watching videos and whatever saved on your laptop or iPad versus you know, getting hard copy discs and playing it on a traditional television. And then even trying to figure out the connections from there, like how to hook it all up. So having a look at the front of the trailer, we can see that there are two clothes storage compartments on either side of the actual bed. And something really important to mention, this is a true queen, it's a 60 by 80. Often you'll see what are called uh, RV queens, and that is a 60 by 74. It's six inches shorter. This is a true 60 by 80 queen. Um, there is a hanger rod in each of these cupboards. However, it's spaced quite far back. I'm not sure 100% why that is. There are two USB A's on either side of the bed. And oh, that's really cool. There's uh, lights on the inside of it. I didn't know that. Um, interestingly though, the lights are only operated by the passenger side. Um, again, this is just another reason why you might want to remove your TV. Uh, just operating the door has become, you know, that much easier. And behind here is actually a really nice window. So what you do is you just simply lift up on the bottom of the love seat. There's a single latch on this side here. We'll pull down the latch and then we just simply tip down the actual bed. So taking a closer look at the actual sleeping area, I think this window is just super, super cool because it lets in tons of natural light. And if you're laying in bed, you could almost look up and get like a stargazing opportunity. I actually really would like to see this on more trailers. I'm sure it's gonna be an obvious added cost, but I think the experience would be worth it, provided you have good blackout blinds. 
Now on the side here, we can actually see there's a nice little uh, shelf where you can set your phone or a glass of water. And that exists on both sides of the trailer as well as back down here. Is there a plug? No. So I think that's really neat. We also have um, push button lights here on each side. So when you're laying in bed, you can use that as like a reading light or a navigational light if you need to get up in the middle of the night. Well, that's neat. So you actually don't even need to pull this back. There's like a little ramp and uh, it kind of slides back in place. Let's see. Oh, and this pops right back up. Maybe I'll support it at its back. Yeah, there we go. So that's actually really easy to navigate. And if you are entertaining because the dinette is inherently a smaller dinette, then this is actually pretty good from like a flex space capacity. It's comfortable for actually putting some drinks down on here. Now we can see here, there is actually a cupboard, lower cupboard here, which has a couple of um, sh uh, pocket shelves, single shelf, not so on this side. Um, underneath though, this is storage here on mostly the left side, but not so much on that right side. So storage on this trailer, I find a bit interesting. Um, it's great to see. It's maybe not the best access. And from a mountain biker's perspective, that's not uh, big enough that you could fit a downhill helmet through our full face. Um, you could probably squeeze your trail helmet through there, but um, you know, keeping it protected from like bouncing around, you'd want to obviously make sure that that's safe. Where I would put your helmets instead is actually right up and underneath the seating here. So if I just go ahead and remove this cushion, flip this one up, there is, oh, maybe I'll actually remove this all the way for you. There, we can remove this whole thing. And this would be where I would put your helmets. Um, it would be more of like a long-term-ish kind of storage location, but um, yeah, that would be uh, that would be the spot. So it's tricky to do this one-handed. So I wanna walk you through the kitchen here because I do actually have some thoughts, both positive and um, let's call it constructive criticism. So right here, we have a over the range hood, which this is gonna duct out any uh, moisture that you know is gonna come off. So if you're cooking a pot of pasta, that's gonna put a lot of moisture out into the air. And that's kind of the last thing that you want in a small space like this. So what we're, you're gonna see a lot of the times people opening up windows uh, or some trailers just having a fan located right above it. But in a perfect world, you're gonna to wanna to have a over the range uh, exhaust fan because with that might be coming like oils as well from like cooking. So let's say you're doing a stir fry, those uh, oils, those small droplets are gonna rise and that's gonna you know want uh, to just accumulate all around in your kitchen. By having this with the exhaust fan, that's gonna allow you to actually uh, pull out a lot of that moisture and, uh, and oil that would otherwise accumulate in the space. So this is actually really nice to see. If we flip this up, we can see that there are two storage. This is where you would likely be putting your you know, dishes and things. And if we have a look over here, we see a round sink. Now, I personally do not like round sinks. And the simple reason being is try putting a square cutting board in them. It's a bit of a nightmare unless it's like physically smaller than the actual like sink assembly itself. I get that they're really trendy right now, but this is something uh, uh, that I think can become and would be problematic. On the same side though, there's a ton of space behind here. So if you wanted to just use this, you know, for storing like fruit bowls and whatever, because when you are gonna be cooking, you have this as a backsplash that flips up for your cooktop, two burner cooktop, um, then you can actually have some nice sort of kitchen storage space there. So I've talked about this in other videos, but it's worth pointing out here as well. This is a microwave and convection oven. These are notoriously small, you know, think a cup of coffee and not much more, but um, they are much better than the traditional stoves that you may uh, be used to seeing in RV trailers. I think there was an initial pushback about losing the conventional stove, but there's kind of a running joke in the RV community that if you want to burn something, then you put it in the stove. Uh, I actually recently made a pizza in the convection of, a, of my mom's trailer and it turned out just fine. So I actually think this is uh, nice to see. So referencing the information here, we can see that on this trailer, there includes a 
a 190 watt solar panel on the roof and a 2000 watt inverter. However, it does only have a 10 amp charge controller and I don't think it's an MPPT because I'm sure if it was, they'd be advertising that. That's just subtle efficiency differences, but I digress. The reason this 10 amp controller is important is because if you're thinking that you might want to upgrade to additional solar panels and large uh, battery banks in the future, you're going to need to upgrade this charge controller as well uh, to at least a 30 um, amp minimum. Also, we can see on this trailer, they're doing something that I'm really glad to see. They're including a wireless JBL Bluetooth speaker. And the reason why I'm really glad to see that is because so many of these trailers, you get interior and exterior audio that is controlled through like a central CD player. But as a consumer, you're paying for all those speakers. And quite honestly, they're just bolted to the side of your trailer. So if you want to go down to the beach or the water or whatever, it's not like you're bringing those, uh, the music with you. By including a JBL speaker, I think this pacifies consumers who might be trained to think that they want that um, you know, traditional audio system, but I think this is a much better solution. Not to mention, at least here in Canada, I don't know anybody who ever uses their speakers on the outside, um, mostly just because we're trying to be courteous to those next to us, unless you're going into remote areas and you're having more of like a party atmosphere, in which case you're probably wanting to bring a much larger uh, audio system with you anyways. But I think going with a portable Bluetooth speaker really reflects the way that people are actually using these RV products. Now, speaking of the way that people use these RV products, I'm gonna spin you around and we're gonna talk about the Dyna a little bit. So I mentioned earlier about there being storage space on this side and not on the side that I'm sitting on because it appears that this is where your uh, furnace or some sort of electronics live. However, this table will lift off and can be sat down and then you can sleep somebody here on its own. One of the things that actually attracted me to this trailer's floor plan in particular is while I don't like a Murphy bed, the fact that that's a true 60 by 80 is really nice. And um, this small dinette where as a couple's trailer, I don't think you really need to seat four people. I think this is more than appropriate if you're one or two uh, people and you want to sit, you know, have your meal and uh, get a little bit of work done at the same time. Now, you are seeing that there is inherently, um, you know, a bit of a, uh, a wobbliness to this table and unfortunately that's just a byproduct of its design. Let's take a look up here. We have your standard uh, plugs. We have a bottle opener with a couple of nice key rings, which is really cool to see. This is your 10 amp charge controller by GoPower. It's a common brand that are used across a lot of these trailers. And then there's this. This is where you would presumably store things. I don't know what exactly. Now, as a mountain biker, I look at this as a cool opportunity to store and showcase and feature your helmets, but to not do so during transit. But I can't think of a cooler way than to drop your, you know, your full face and then your trail helmet and then, you know, something else. I just, I think that this is a really neat, dare I say, almost like artistic showcase. But again, don't do it during transit. Down at the other end, we have more control panels for more of the trailer things. For that stuff, I would recommend just ask your dealership. They're going to give you a full, um, you know, walkthrough on that. So jumping behind the camera again, we can come down this way and we can see this. I actually missed it on my initial walkthrough. This is your pantry. So I'm gonna back up again just to show you the sheer size of it, but it's really, really big. And this is something that's really nice to see because again, so often, um, you know, people aren't sure where to put, is that a safe? That is a safe. Uh, sure where to put their food. This is more than tall enough for like a big bag of chips or tall items, pasta boxes. So then that way you can again, just focus on having your dishes up here and your food in the cupboard. There is a cupboard here below. It's quite narrow. So I'm not 100% what you would put here other than a garbage because um, it, it, there's no other real spot for garbage, let's be honest. This is kind of it. Unless you want something freestanding in your floor, you know, maybe you could put that. Well, actually, I wouldn't really want that over near my bed anyway. So there's a nice window in the back. I can't remember if I pointed that out. Again, lots of natural light in there, but this is a really cool feature. I like to see that. So um, taking a look in the shower, we can see that there is a skylight. It is a 
interesting construction. I haven't seen this style before. It's very opaque um, as opposed to having like a dual layer that we've seen in other manufacturers before, but at least it is a full, um, you know, line shower. And then real importantly, I want to show this. This is the shower miser system. So what this does is um, it's a way to conserve water. So traditionally between your actual hot water heater and your shower, there's, you know, three, four, five feet of, um, of plumbing minimum. And in that is full with water. If you, even if you turn on your hot water heater, all the water that's sitting in the line is cold. And so even if you were to turn on the taps and try to take a shower, what's going to happen is you're going to have to wait until all that cold water purges its way through it. And that's just going to go straight down the drain into your gray tank. So it's lost. So what the shower miser does is you give this a flick and it will circulate the water back into your fresh tank. And once this turns like a gray white, I'm not hundred percent sure because I've, I've never used one personally, I just know the system. This will change colors. And when it changes colors, then you know that it, uh, well, it goes from this blue. Let's see if I can get you better. It kind of looks gray there, probably from the sun, um, but it will change into uh, like a gray color and that, that indicates that it's warm. And then you just flick it back here and then that will send hot water through your shower. So it's, it's a, if you're doing a lot of like off grid type activities as I am, this is uh, the system that you are going to want to um, consider. Now, turning the other way in the washroom here, uh, pocket door, which is cool. I like pocket doors. Great way to save space and it doesn't interfere on, uh, on other sides of the, uh, of, of the, of the trailer. Um, this is the primary feature that made me think that this would be great for mountain bikers. So here we are in the washroom. We have this huge, tall storage cabinet with two uh, or three, sorry, other cubby compartments here. And so what I envision is coming in here and hanging, you know, let's say you come in, you're out for a ride, you're super sweaty. You've got a bunch of uh, dust that turned to dirt. You come in. You strip down, you can throw all your riding gear in here, keep it away from your regular clothes so you're not putting, you know, dirty riding gear next to your nice button up for that occasional dinner in town and, uh, and you know, uh, leave this all for your dedicated city clothes. You can dump all your, uh, you know, uh, pads and helmets or whatever else that might have an odor to it that you don't want sitting outside, put them in here and you can turn on this fan, close the pocket door and this becomes like a little, um, you know, uh, change room odor proof kind of area. Oops, I'll pick that up in a second. And then you can jump in your shower, use the shower miser to conserve your water, rinse off and then feel better about yourself before you tuck into bed at the night. We do have a little medicine cabinet, um, nice little shelf at the bottom. This is more than sufficient in terms of, um, uh, you know, space that, uh, that you might need. And then in terms of storing like bathroom tissue, then you can stick probably about six rolls, maybe down there, depends on the size of the roll. And um, so that's where I would put that there. Alternatively, uh, you know, you can put uh, some of the bathroom tissue in here. And then what you would most likely do is put your towels uh, for showering in, at the beach in here. Um, doesn't have one as of yet, but this would be a great spot for a towel rack um, or a couple of individual hooks for like his and hers. Now I did mention earlier that the steady step does have its pros and cons, and it would be a con if let's say you were to lift up the stairs and dump a bunch of dirt inside. However, what's really cool is that this trailer has this system here that uh, it's got like a vacuum or something like that, and you just simply uh, brush all the dirt into there and it uh, I guess sucks it out. Uh, road vac is what it's called. I've never used one before. I'd have no idea how efficient it is, but I love the idea because alternatively, you're either carrying like a stick style vacuum or a, um, uh, a, a dustpan and broom. So I want to conclude this episode with summarizing and giving a little bit of contextualization to this Ibex. Before we do that, I did mention earlier in the video during our walk around, that this is a seven foot wide trailer. Technically speaking, it's 88 inches, so just a little wider than that seven foot exterior. But I would still consider this a narrow body trailer relative to like an eight or even an eight and a half foot wide trailer. 
Now, why is that important? Well, as mountain bikers, a lot of our trailheads are located up forest service roads. Those forest service roads tend to be very narrow, even being bench cuts on the side of mountains. So a narrower trailer is going to help you navigate in, into those areas. Moreover, if you're looking at a trailer that comes prepped with solar and uh, you know inverters that is intended for boondocking, dry camping off grid, then you're likely not considering about going into uh, provincial and national and state parks as your primary destination. You're looking at uh, you know taking it out into the the areas that you often see in sort of the the the, the uh, marketing photos. You know the the field of grass or the the cliff overlooking the canyon, that sort of thing. And so again, that narrow body is going to help you navigate into those areas. Now, I would like to provide some context for this Ibex 19 RBM. Here at Field of Dreams RV, it retails for $39,999 Canadian. When we looked at the Winnebago Mini Winnie 2108, the non-flex version at Arcan, that retails on average for about $49,999 Canadian, which is a price difference of approximately $10,000 or 20% cost savings with this Ibex. Now, cost savings can and does take place in a number of different areas. So for example, using thinner baggage compartment doors, using manual jacks, having a single 20 pound propane tank on the front versus dual, having a 10 amp solar charge controller compared to a 30 amp and so forth. That said, I would like to commend this Ibex because it has a lot of the same, if not even upgraded features over that more expensive Winnebago. So for example, this trailer is full LED lighting, just like the Winnebago. However, it has the Lippert Steady Step, which is arguably considered an upgrade, especially through the lens of a mountain biker, where we would like to take it into those more remote locations. And flipping into the trailer allows for a uh, much higher ground clearance in this area. Moreover, this Ibex has five genuine Goodyear tires, the fifth being the spare, compared to the Winnebago, which had a Westlake on the back. In addition, the Ibex also has an over-the-range vent fan, which I personally think is quite important because that's gonna help suck out and manage moisture inside of the trailer, as well as all the little oil droplets that like to float up with your cooking. Now, for being entirely honest here, even at home, I don't use my range fan as often as I should, but I'm also inherently less concerned about moisture management in a much larger apartment than a much smaller trailer like this. However, in the interest of full disclosure, while there are opportunities and examples that Ibex has chosen to save money, I would like to address the fact that I did see a couple of quality control issues on this trailer in particular. Now, it's no secret that in the industry, a lot of people are starting to call trailers manufactured between, let's say, 2020 and 2022-ish as COVID trailers. I'm not an industry inside expert, so I can't speak to why that may or may not be. And I'm confident that uh, Field of RV Dreams is going to address those quality concerns before it's delivered to a customer. I do think it's worth mentioning though, because in my opinion, quality control is outside of the actual manufacturing. For example, the table that's used inside here has that two post construction with a, a bit of movement to it or much more movement than I would like to see compared to the table that we saw in the Winnebago, but that's componentry choice, not quality control. So when it comes to shopping for a trailer, I hope that this series becomes beneficial in trying to help educate you for the things to look at when you're trying to compare arguably apples and oranges, because this is a less expensive trailer that actually in many ways punches above its price point. And I think that's really commendable. So I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions, you're welcome to leave them in the comments down below or simply contact Field of RV Dreams here in Airdrie as this is inherently their business. So thank you very much for watching. Please do check out some of the other videos as well because uh, even if it's not a trailer that you're specifically interested in, I think that you might find uh, you know, pieces of information that might help you in your purchasing decision, even if you're not a mountain biker, but maybe you're a stand-up paddleboarder, maybe you're a birder, maybe you just like uh, you know, stargazing at night. The way that I'm approaching this trailer hopefully will help you, you know, in your own purchase decision. So thank you very much for watching. I sincerely do appreciate it. And remember, if you like mountain bike content, be sure to head over to the Grey Wolf bike channel also, if you like the video, 
Don't forget to give it a like button. It helps other people find it as well. And if you're interested in future and upcoming videos, be sure to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Sincerely do appreciate it. You take care and bye for now.